Hi, my name is Vinay Prabhu and in this short presentation, we'll go over our paper, Rotation Invariant Gate Identification with Quaternion Convolutional Neural Networks. This is a joint work with Bowen Jing and Angela Gu at Stanford University and John Bailey at UnifyID. Introduction. Gate-based uh, uh, human gate identification has been in popular vogue for a long time. If you've read the works of William Shakespeare, right from Julius Caesar to The Tempest, you have his characters recognizing each other by the sound of their footsteps or by the idiosyncrasies in their gait. If you watch Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, you have this agent who's trying to break into this ultra-secure facility, and the only biometric that he's not able to break through is the gate-based soft biometric. Gate as a passive biometric or soft biometric has been used, uh, has been studied under different modalities where the measurements are carried out by using audio signals or by using pressure sensors or video or even Wi-Fi signals. In this talk, we'll be focusing on gate as a passive biometric using accelerometers on smartphones. With regards to video-based gate, uh, gate analysis, you have the clear threat of surveillance um, and some of these concerns can be overcome by basically looking at gate biometric via the lens of accelerometry, where you are basically collecting data in a consensual manner uh, by uh, tapping into the motion sensors on a smartphone and by using the best principles of federated learning and ensuring that there is consensual enrollment of the user, privacy aware federated learning so that no data belonging to the user ever leaves the local device and by performing on device inference and focusing on authentication or surveillance this specific modality of gate biometric has a lot of potential for applications in the near future gate accelerometry most of the smartphones today ship with mem sensors called accelerometers that measure the acceleration along the three device centric axis as seen in the slide here and this is basically the visualization of the variation of the accelerometric and the gyroscopic sensors or the magnitude of those signals as I go through my gate cycles, which basically constitutes two steps. The, before beginning uh, to do any kind of machine learning or classification, one needs to perform gate cycle segmentation uh, that basically involves you segmenting the time series of accelerometric data into uh, slices of gate instance and here is the snapshot of a single gate cycle. So typically after performing the slicing or segmentation, you resample everything uh, or interpolate everything to size 100 or size 200, thereby re resulting in an n by 4 by 100 tensor that is then harnessed to create a gate data set. And this can, uh, you know, very similar to what ImageNet did with computer vision, this can unleash a lot of uh, you know, transfer learning opportunities uh, within uh, neurodegenerative disease treatment, geriatric care, and gait and posture, basically medical domains that require a lot of data. But if you are using gait trained uh, you know, deep learning models, you can uh, basically transfer learn into these domains with very little data. Focusing on user authentication, you basically have the enrollment phase where a person comes in with uh, his or her gait cycles and then uh, you ensure that the data is harvested in uh, ethical fashion with consent. And then you basically kind of fine tune a previously trained universal background model uh, to basically build a user specific model. And this model adaptation happens on the device. So at no point of time, you basically have any data leaving the smartphone and going into a honeypot elsewhere. In the authentication phase, you basically have the uh, universal background model uh, that is basically adapted uh, to form the user specific model or the user model. So when a person walks during the uh, authentication phase, their gate cycles are fed into the user specific model. And then you basically have two output nodes pertaining to me or not me. And this is what differentiates authentication built using sound federated learning principles over surveillance. The problem that we address in this pipeline is rotation or the flip orientation problem, where a person uh, enrolls with a very specific orientation of the device during enrollment, whereas uh, you basically get to see a completely new positioning of the device during the testing phase uh, that might often result in cataclysmic drops in accuracy. 
this can be conquered by either by doing explicit rotation invariant transformation. For example, in this uh, specific paper that uh, is uh, seen in the screen, uh, they basically use a bunch of uh, PCA-based signal processing techniques to actually perform the translation of the uh, rotation trans transformation, where the X, Y, Z axis data is basically projected into gravity, motion, and torso. Uh, and this requires a lot of signal processing and typically involves uh, performing sing singular value decomposition along the time axis, which is an order T cubed operation. The other smarter thing to do is to basically do implicit rotation invariance transformation or basically make your neural network rotation invariant by harnessing convolutions with quaternions. We present a convolutional neural network architecture whose output is invariant with respect to an arbitrary rotation of the input gate tensors. This network is constructed by stacking a number of rotation equivariant quaternion convolutional layers. These quaternion layers leverage the representation of 3D spatial rotations as quaternion conjugation, as shown in this 3 blue 1 brown animation. Specifically, our kernel takes as input a sequence of vectors in 3D Euclidean space, viewed as quaternions, and outputs a single quaternion whose vector part is equivariant in the manner described. The details of our kernel are shown here, I'll just describe the high-level details. We have an input window of vectors viewed as quaternions. The vector in the, or the quaternion in the middle is called the pivot. For every other quaternion, we learn to rotate it around the pivot by a specific angle, and then multiply it with the original unrotated quaternion in that index. This operation of quaternion multiplication can be thought of as having similar properties as the vector cross product. The final output of the kernel is then a linear combination of all of these products. We validate our architecture on cotemporal experiments. The setup here is a number of users recording gate cycles with two phones in completely different orientations, one for training and validation, and the other for testing. A standard convolutional neural network architecture does pretty well on the validation set, but it experiences a catastrophic failure when it encounters the test set whose orientation is unseen in the training data. The quaternion neural network, on the other hand, is very robust to these shifts in orientation. The features learned by our architecture can be visualized as trajectory fragments in 3D Euclidean space, shown at left. I've also illustrated the application of one of our kernels to a input gate cycle. The gate cycle in the middle is shown, and the output quaternion cycle that results from applying a kernel to the gate cycle is shown at right. These diagrams hopefully illustrate the unique nature of the input domain of gate cycles and the benefits of having an architecture specifically tailored for them. Finally, I'd like to present some references and acknowledge a couple of individuals. First, our co-author, Angela Gu. Secondly, this work was performed as part of the Unified ID AI Fellowship, so I'd like to thank my Fall 2019 Fellowship cohort. Finally, I'd like to thank all of you for your attention today.